Welcome back, my name's Steve and thank you for joining me today on my photography journey. Today, I'm walking you through how to edit your photos using Apple Photos on a Mac. So not my usual Lightroom or Photoshop, but something a bit different. So whether you're using an iPhone, a Nikon mirrorless camera like me, or anything else to be honest, then Apple's actual free built-in photos app is surprisingly powerful and really good for the job. So in this video, what I'll do is talk to you about how to edit both RAW and JPEG landscapes mainly. Um, I'll go through it step by step and just using the default Mac app, no plugins, no subscriptions or anything like that and we'll go from there really. So let's jump into it. So here we are in the Apple Photos app and I've created an album with some pictures to actually show what it can do. I've got a mixture of ones that I've taken with my phone, so mainly landscapes and also a nighttime shot here and a selfie. Um, and also on here I have a, let's go to information up here. And you can see um, this is the album and this is where the pictures were taken. So for example, this one here was taken on the Isle of Wight in Shanklin. And this one was taken on my Nikon Z30 using the DX12 to 28 millimeter F3.5 to 5.6 power zoom vibration reduction lens, which is a bit of a mouthful. And then this one down here, um, similar kind of shot in the same place was on my iPhone. Uh, I've got the iPhone 15 Pro and it used the ultra wide camera to take this one. It was F 2.2 and a thousandth of a second at ISO 50. So a bit of a range of pictures here, but what we'll do is have a look at editing them and show you step by step how to do it. So then when you're first importing a picture into here, you have got this section over here for recently saved, um, they're kind of your recently imported pictures. That's where these would all come in. I've just created an album for them to make it a bit easier to demonstrate what's going on. So let's stick with Apple to begin with. So I'm going to take this picture here, um, which again, let's just look at the information. So this was taken on my iPhone in Shanklin on the Isle of Wight and let's go into it and edit it. So we can close this information point here. We need to double click to go into the photo and then up in the corner here, we have an edit button. So now we're in the editing interface and you can see our picture in the middle. We've got a few bits and pieces across the top here, but what we're interested in to begin with is on the right hand side here, we have got our adjust area. So we've got light, color, black and white, red eye, various other things on here. And if you can't see any of them, so for example, light here, you've got this little symbol on the side, click onto that and then it will open it up and you'll be able to see something. So this is a slider, so you can click on it and then drag and you'll notice that it's just, it's not just, it makes it really dark or it makes it really light. It's doing something slightly different to it. it it's helping you out. Um, if you want to, you can reset it. You've got this backwards arrow, so click on that. And then this unticks to show that none of this section is applied anymore. There are further options in here. So you can adjust any of these um, on their own and see what it does to it. Double click it and it returns to zero. But when you're adjusting this top slider, let's make this a little bit darker you can see that it's actually changed all of these different things that are within there. So it's made some of them move to the right, it's made some of them move to the left, and this is just protecting different parts of your image and allowing you to kind of get a bit of a nicer result. But you can change any of these yourself. So if you don't like how it's changed something, you can change it yourself. And again, double click on it to reset it or reset the whole thing up here. So let me just make this slightly darker. And that's what I tend to do is change the light or the exposure, kind of how the shadows look, how the highlights look and adjust that image that way to begin with. If you want to see 
how this compares to your original image. In the top left hand corner here, we have this, um, these two squares. Um, if you press and hold, it will go back to the original, let go, and it comes back to where you are currently with your editing. So that looks okay for the moment. Then we can come down and let's increase our colors slightly. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? So again, we can compare that to before and after. But what difference has just our color changing made? You can use this button here, this tick, to take those edits off. So this is with just the light um, settings applied. And then tick this, and it brings in your color as well. So you've got those two different options there. Again, you've got options for this, so you can change the saturation, vibrance, and cast as much as you want, um, or use the big slider to, to change the kind of the totality of it. So you can see that this image is already looking a bit better. The colors are a lot nicer than they were on that original image. Then as we run down this list, we can see that we've got white balance. So white balance is essentially how warm or how cool your image is. So you've got different options in here. So you can find something neutral, uh, a neutral gray color, uh, click on the eyedropper and then choose a neutral gray point in your image. And that will then adjust your color temperature for you. I don't really have anything that's a neutral gray in here. So I could either change it to temperature and tint where you've got these two different options now. And again, you can drag it one way to make it warmer or the other way to make it cooler. So what I mean by that is if you're making it warmer, you'll make it more yellow. And if you make it cooler, you'll make it more blue. Let's reset that one. So let's go to temperature and tint and let's just warm it up slightly. Now I'm just doing this by eye. And what I want to do is have it kind of roughly how it looked on the day when I took the picture. So it was a bit warmer, there we go. And again, you've got this tick here. You can take that one off and see the difference that just this one has made. And what I would say is that any time that you're making changes to any of these settings, try and have a look at it before you applied that setting and after you applied that setting. If it's improved the image, leave it, move on. If it hasn't improved the image, adjust it slightly, tweak it slightly so that you've got a good quality image every time you move on to a different tool. You don't want to be doing lots of different things and then realizing that you're not sure which one made it look bad or which one made it look good because then you can't learn from your process. The other bits that you've got down here are you've got a noise reduction and a sharpen. So these two are quite useful. So let's start with noise reduction. In here, you have got the ability to compensate for any noise in your image. Let's just have a look at what that does. So let's increase this. Doesn't really look like it's made much of a difference to be honest. And the color noise. Not a huge difference, but then this wasn't a particularly noisy image to begin with. If you're shooting at high ISOs, if you are shooting at night in particular, then that is where you might find more use for this. If we zoomed in, we would be able to see more. Talk of which, if you want to zoom in, all you need to do is use this slider up at the top here, and then you can slide and zoom all the way in. And it is quite a good quality image. You can see I'm just zooming in with my mouse as well. Um, see the buildings in the background there, uh, but let's put this back down to fitting to the screen um, or you can see how big it is. So let's go to 100% and this is how big that image is at 100%. But let's go back down to fitting on the screen. So I'm now happy with my noise reduction, didn't really need to do much with it there, but let's have a look at definition. So if we come into here, this is something that in, if you're used to using Lightroom, you'll find in there and it's called texture. So we can move this, um, again, it's a slider and we're changing the amount of it. So we can go all the way there and everything looks quite 
sharp, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, it's, it's not a, a look that I particularly like. Let's go for the, like I said before, tick and untick to show it. The, I, I much prefer the, the kind of, maybe a, a small amount of it so that you've got some texture in these waves and, and, and things like that. But overall, we don't really need to add too much of that. And then what I do sometimes like to do with my landscape pictures is add a bit of a vignette. So we just increase the strength of that slightly. If we go all the way, you'll be able to see this is what it does. These corners, are made darker basically and you can change how soft it makes it and we can also really come back so just very minimal um, and there we go that looks quite good you have also got your cropping tools up at the top here so if you come into here you're happy with your edit and things like that but you want to change how it's looking Let's come to a 16 by nine, which for a landscape is a fairly standard um, crop. And then what we'll try and do is just line up our landscape, the land in the middle, in the center. So if you click on it, you get the grid appearing so you can see where things lie. And in there, what I'm looking at here is on this left-hand side getting the land in this center, center box basically. Um, so we've got a nice balance of land as well as sea and sky. And there we go, that's quite nice. So we can click on done. And then that is our picture nicely edited. Um, so there we go, that's, that's how you do it. And the same is true for any of the other pictures that you've got. So then you've got this image, which like I said, came from my Nikon. So this is my Z30. Um, and you can do exactly the same with this. So it doesn't matter where your pictures have come from. And actually, let me just show you this, this magic wand up at the top, this is an auto enhance version. Let me just crop this one as well. Similar kind of thing, a 16 by nine. Line things up in the center. Obviously it's not quite the same picture. Click on done there. And the magic wand does your auto kind of settings for you. So you can have an easy option. You can adjust some of the colors and things as you like on here. And then next week, I'm going to talk to you a bit more about the advanced settings on this, some of the other bits and pieces that you can use in the editing in order to get the absolute most out of the picture that you've got. One thing to remember is that all of my pictures are shot in RAW. And what does that mean? RAW is a file setting where you have far more detail stored into that image. The files are a lot bigger than a JPEG, but that means you've got a lot more information in there. So you can push the colors, the contrast, the everything basically. So all of the settings that we've just adjusted, you can do to a bigger extent on a RAW file than you can on a JPEG and you'll get better outcomes from that. So I would always recommend shooting your pictures in RAW and working on them in RAW. And it's at that point that you would then look to export it as a JPEG to share it on social media, to have it printed, send it to friends and family and things like that. So that's what I would do, work in a big color space, in a big file in the RAW format, and then share it in a smaller one such as a JPEG. So now that you've edited your picture, what we can do is then export it. So you can click on the picture to select it and then come up to our file menu and then come down to export. And then you've got various options here. So you can export just this one photo or the unmodified original. Let's just export this one photo for the moment. It gives you lots of options. So we can choose what kind of picture we want to save. So let's stick to a JPEG. We want it to be high quality. We want a big color space. So sRGB is probably the most compatible version. So let's stick with that. And then we can choose what size we want it to be. 
then we can choose how to name it, whether to include information such as the location, uh, title and things like that. And then we can just export it. Once we pressed export, we can then, it's basically Finder on your Mac. You can choose where you want to export it to, press export, that file will be moved. You'll, you'll see the progress up at the top here, um, but that was nice and quick because it was a single picture. So once you've exported it, it's saved onto your computer so you can share it to Instagram, send it in a message to someone, or even send it off to be printed. So how good is Apple Photos? For quick edits, particularly global ones where you're changing the whole image, like exposure, like the colors, to be honest, it's really very good. And it's so straightforward. And with the options of the Mac, and we'll talk in future weeks about the mobile versions, it's such a good option. But there is no masking, there are no layers. So it's not quite as good as Lightroom, but the core tools that are included for free work really well. I've edited plenty of my Nikon RAWs on here, my iPhone pictures, and they are fantastic for sharing. You, you can do the edits on here, you can print them off, send them off, put them on Instagram. So if you're someone who wants a kind of simple, non-destructive way of editing your pictures uh, without having to go into Lightroom, pay monthly subscriptions and things like that, then this is a really great starting point. If you found this helpful, follow me on Instagram where I post more kind of behind the scenes things and tips and tricks, both with Lightroom, Apple Photos and things like that. And don't forget to subscribe to me here on YouTube because my next video in this little series will be looking in a bit more detail at some of the more advanced editing techniques that you've got within Apple Photos. Um, we'll start off on the Mac and then following that we'll look at the mobile, so the phone and iPad versions as well. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you learned something. Have a great week and I will see you again soon on my photography journey. Bye.